What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I am in Australia at Bennett's Customs right now, having a great time. Got here a couple days ago, and uh, we are getting ready to go to the Australian Street Rod Nationals in Mundra. One thing that is going on is that uh, the old Midnight Special is going back together to get shown out there. Sneak peek, check this out. This is what's the latest kind of uh, birthday for this car super cool i love what he did with the louvers he's punched these louvers himself and uh, polished the hood and then painstakingly painted to give it that contrast i just i just think this car looks killer one thing that was a bit of an eyesore and a kind of a controversial thing since the beginning everybody's kind of like nah we don't know we like it do we not it's this windshield it just kind of looks too like choppy i don't mean to hurt your one feeling jordan but uh yeah just doesn't work, right? So uh, what we're gonna do is make it out of brass. Kind of standing back, looking at it with it off and love the look of seeing the steering wheel, but it does need a little bit of something there. So what the idea is, is to make this a little bit shorter and a little bit more laid back with a little bit of a reverse curve in it. And so Jordan has asked me to make that little piece, little, little make a custom touch on this car and I'm more than happy to do that and uh, accepting the challenge of making a nice little reverse curve out of brass. I think what I'm gonna do to start off making this piece is uh, I'm gonna have to make a template. Um, so what I'm going to do with the, oh, look at this, look at this. Check out these tees. These guys have good teas. Brand new. Very good. Hot off the press. Hot off the oh, press. Like off, the, new off new the screen. New. They're not brand pressed, they're, they're silk screened, okay? I'm probably gonna use some of this card, this thick card here, and I'm just gonna, I, I really need to make sure that I have the exact same bolt pattern, this exact same flange on this piece, but I'm gonna have it a little bit more angle on it, shallower angle, and then we're gonna kind of flare it up as in reverse curve this a bit. I'm gonna start by making my templates. All right, so my thoughts on templating this thing out, one of our main concerns here, the main things that we gotta get is like, it's got a bit of a peak. So we gotta make sure this flange is dead on. Like we wanna use the exact same holes, right? So that that is the challenge of this. It's a very simple piece, but we gotta make sure that our piece makes the same holes line up, the same flange, all that. What I have to do is be able to mark out the inside of that. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm kind of winging it here, but I found a nice big contractor pencil in his toolbox. I'm gonna try and mark out exactly where the tip is, right? This, this line is what I need to mark out. It has to show me exactly where the peak is also. Not the best line, but it's gonna be enough. We're actually gonna tape this on the inside after this is cut. We'll line it right up to this, and then we'll paper template on top of this so that we can actually get the whole, well, the holes and the flange with our paper template. Should be able to add some paper.
I slit these a little bit so that I can actually push them over. You see when I, when I push them over how much wider it gets here? That is telling you that it needs to stretch on that edge, right? So when we actually tip that edge, we're gonna have to go to the stretcher or linear stretch or whatever to allow it to happen. That's what the paper's telling you, right? So um, your paper is very important. It is your roadmap. You might feel like, oh, I'm just making arts and crafts and I'm not really getting anything done. This is the thing to take the most time on is your paper pattern because if this is wrong, your piece will be wrong, right? Or if this is better, your piece will be better. So don't underestimate the paper pattern. I've got all my holes marked, got the edge marked, and now I'm going to take this off again. We're gonna trim that line. Now that we know that that line is the outside of that flange, it should be pretty accurate. And we'll be able to measure back from that for the inside tipping edge, which is this corner here. And uh, our template should be done. I don't have um, an exact idea of what this outside profile is gonna be yet because we'll probably wanna see what it looks like on the car and we'll wanna make it symmetrical. So I'll probably fold this in half and make a symmetrical cut to start with. Okay, it is time to lay this out. So now I'm gonna measure the flange and transfer that in a dotted line here so that we can actually make that curve. We know where that tip is. We've got kind of the little butt right here where that crease is gonna be. Scratch that, I'm just gonna cut this out so that I can actually use calipers to scribe that next line after the outside is cut. Oh, I like butter. Like butter. Do you guys have butter in Australia? Yeah. You just don't have cream though. No, no cream. So weird. No, cr no, no, we have cream, we don't have creamer. Pretty nice, pretty nice. This stuff has a little film on it too, so that this is the good side. I'm definitely gonna mark out our lip. Would I put the reverse curve in it and then start curving this way? I don't know. Never really done this exact thing before, so we'll have to figure it out. Well, having a look at this now, I'm willing to bet Jordan used tape 
to mark out his flange. Cause it's exactly the same size. Did you use tape? To mark out my flange. <laughs> he yes, did. I did. He did, he did. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think what I'm gonna do is probably go into the bead roller because there's a film on here and my mark is on the film. I don't wanna take the film off. I don't wanna put it through the English wheel with the film on. So I'm gonna to go to through the bead roller and just basically not tip it. I'm just going to roll over the line just to scribe the line um, of the flange, right? And then I'm actually probably going to do a bunch of linear stretching on this edge and then try and form it a bit. It's a little bit of a artistic game. Like this flange has to be accurate, but the amount of flare that we get is not so much set in stone, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. Go to the bead roller and actually, you guys might like this. These tools came all the way from my shop back at home. Jordan got my old original bead roller. If you guys have built the bead roller that we have now, it was designed off of this original model. When I needed a deeper bead roller, way back in the day, like probably almost 10 years ago, I built this one, used a torch, and it's like not much different than the one we use today. It's very similar. Um, and uh, basically Jordan needed some tools and he came around and uh, so he got my first Sosa Metalworks Shape-O-Matic, which I absolutely love this machine. We actually did some tuning on it the last time I was here and it works amazing. Um, the old bead roller. This is an AC motor from a garage sale gear reduced, chain driven, custom made. He made a nice uh, table for it. Also the old planishing hammer. So uh, yeah, it's kind of nostalgic right now. I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and use the old bead roller. Actually, it's got the right dies in it right now. We're just gonna use that sharp die against the flat to just roll that. And then we'll get into some uh, English wheel linear stretching. All right, that was all I wanted to do, is just kind of get a, uh, a line on there, which it obviously worked, because it cut right through that. Ooh. Schwing. Okay, so I learned, the last time I was here, um, I was talking to Aiden. I, I, I went to Bespoke Coachworks and was able to learn some stuff from Aiden, and he said, you know, What's, whatever you want to learn, I'll show it to you. And I said, reverse curves, like, teach me about that. So his, that's what he did. He showed me reverse curves in the power hammer, reverse curves in the English wheel. And basically, for our reverse curve here, I need to stretch the top of this panel to get it to curve this way. So to do that, I'm gonna start with the English wheel on the inside and work my way out. And that's gonna push the metal wider and wider as it gets to the outside, so. And uh, as far as, the actual die, you want to get as close as to what you're really going to do. So, I mean, I don't know. This one might be a little bit too much. I'm probably going to swap that out. Righty loosey, lefty tighty. Little bit shallower radius on the lower anvil. 
Start off with really light pressure. We don't want to put a bunch of track marks in it. We're already putting a ton of shape into this thing, but what we're trying to get out of it is, is quite substantial, so we're gonna have to do a bunch of this. We're starting to get our curve, but uh, it's gonna take quite a bit of wheeling. This is pretty thick material. I can see I've actually got a little bit of a bubble in here because I probably didn't wheel enough on the outside. I was wheeling a little bit too much in here, but we're still gonna be able to get all that out just by continuing to wheel our way out. This is where we are at with the curve. We've got uh, quite a bit of reverse curve in it, but I think we'll try for a little more. Can have a look at sort of how it fits the car. Definitely going to need to be a bit shorter because we're close to the uh, steering wheel. We don't want to be cutting our hands on that. So I'll probably lower it maybe another inch. I think I'll do that next. And then we might give it a little bit more curve. We still have to tip the bottom flange, but uh, it is coming along. So I'm, I am going to, do that first just trim this down kind of go from there but it is starting to look kind of cool a little bit more flowy Jesus, I had cool very Let's have a look. I think that height is much better. Oh yeah. Oh, you think? Yeah. Way better. It looks like just like a little brass louver. Definitely needs a little more curve. All right then. Just something like even even gradually getting a little sharper there. Yeah. Yeah, because like once that's tipped out, it's gonna kind of flow off there and then maybe it kind of goes like. Yeah. Yeah. No. Back to winging it. Winging it! <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I think we're kind of getting closer to what we were talking about with the um, getting a little extra reverse curve right on the lip, so it's kind of gradually getting there. I think we're almost there, so I'm gonna check it one more time. We'll see what Jordan says. That's, I think, the kick we want. It kind of nicely follows the steering wheel here. And it just lips up a bit. What do you think, Jordan? I trust your judgment. I know, but it's your car. Let's get the final say. It's way better, right? Yeah. Got yeah. tons tons of room there. Kind of gradually lips up. Okay, I'm gonna start tipping this uh, flange next, I think is the... Flangela. Flangela. Okay, back on the old bead roller. Okay, so in order to tip an edge on a bead roller, I'm just using the same dies I had before. These, it's flat on the bottom, sharp on the top. I'm gonna run the same line and pull up while I'm doing it. Yes, we will have to uh, do a little bit of work on the edge to relieve it. It'll need to be stretched a little bit. We might be able to get quite a bit out of it just by pulling on it. Well, it's gonna be a lot of tuning on this edge, but as I said, there needs to be a little bit of stretching on this. So we're gonna put the flat anvil on the lower and it's already flat on the upper. And we're gonna run over this flange very lightly and just be so careful because I really don't wanna have to shrink this with the kick shrinker and mark the brass. As of right now, we haven't hurt the surface finish of the brass at all. We've transferred the beautiful wheels and we haven't heard it. So like if we wanted to polish this, we could. I really don't want to have to use the shrinker stretcher. So I'm going to have to be very careful, very lightly using the flat anvils on the English wheel to get a little bit of stretch in this flange. Show you something cool about this English wheel. Not all wheels have this. So yeah, kudos to Metal Master. This is a very handy thing for our situation. So see you're using the wheel and uh, these dies or these anvils are kind of wide and your track is in the center, but you need to get close to an edge. Well, there's actually a set screw here that allows you to lift one side so that you're tracking closer to an edge than the other. So what I'm gonna do with these flats is actually make it so that the wheels are touching closer to one edge than the other so that we can actually stretch an edge rather than just gripping it flat. We'll be able to stretch more on the edge than the other edge. It's something that uh, very handy to have in an English wheel situation. See it tightening up like that. We've got touching there, open there. Getting closer. Oh, body. A little more. A little more. A little more? A little more.
Basically where I'm at right now is um, I want this thing to sit and not have to be forced at all. I'd like it to just go on, all the bolts line up. So right now it's a little bit curled, a little too tight. So I'm trying to spread it out this way a little bit, like as if I was pulling it. And when you have a shape like this, you can do that by just kind of forming a little bit more out of the stretch. If I were to just not add any more stretch, no more linear stretch, but I'm just kind of forming it a little bit by just adding a little bit of pressure. It's gonna open this up by just trying to curve it more this way. It will try and pull this apart a little bit. So I'm, that's all I'm doing right now. Um, after now this flange fits pretty good. I've just got a little bit higher crown on this wheel and I'm just pressing down a little bit and rolling through kind of slow and easy. And by doing that, I'm just adding form, not really stretching pressure is very light on the wheels and that's helping it stay open which is what I want I want it to stay a little bit more open so when I set it on the car the bolt holes line up without forcing it at all so I'm being very careful right now just to do a little and check do a little and check I think I'm about there and we're running out of time we got to go tomorrow so um, check it out brass kind of not super shiny it's kind of a little bit of a, you know, a little brassy, a little brassy, a little brassy, super classy, right? I think the, uh, the finish that Jordan would like to uh, have on this is eventually going to be kind of like this, which it's growing on me. I was like, polish it because these are polished, but, but the brass is not polished on this, which makes sense. Like you've got shiny stuff, shiny stuff, shiny stuff, not shiny stuff. Brass, right? Not shiny. Brass, Brass kind of not super shiny. Brass monkey's over there. Brass monkey. He's a not so chunky monkey. So in order for it to weather to an even finish, I think we are just gonna huck it on the polisher and I'll get to see it all polished. And then in another, you know, the next caretaker will uh, not have to polish it and they will let it turn into whatever it's gonna be, which is gonna be like that. Gonna hit it on the polisher, gonna drill a few holes in it, gonna attach it. And I'd say, mission accomplished. Very careful when you're doing this stuff. If you go at a polisher like this and it catches the top, you just ruined all your hard work. So always be aware of the way it's turning. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. It's a funhouse mirror. Oh. I think that's about nice and even. Ready to drill some holes. Preparing for the most nerve wracking thing of the day. Drilling highly polished crap. <laughs>
We did it. Final test is whether or not the holes line up. See how important the paper pattern is? All those holes lined up after all that work. You do your paper pattern right, paper pattern will do you right. All right, we're gonna call that a win. That thing is done. We got a nice little brass wind deflector on there. That is some thick brass. It's 1.6 mil, uh, 16 gauge if you are in the United States. Super stoked with it. Jordan hates it, but that's okay. I no like way. it, so it's fun, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're getting ready to load this thing up, so I'm gonna end the video here. Thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom. Check out Jordan Bennett, Bennett's Customs as well. And don't forget to uh, have a look at the merch store. We got. It's new stuff coming all the time, and uh, really appreciate you guys for watching. Um, thank you very much. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, throw me a comment if you don't mind. I'll catch you on the next one. See you later, everybody.